Hey guys, this is Brian. Uh, today we're going to look at something a little bit different. Uh, more of a result uh, situation versus uh, actual repair. Uh, today we got a Mighty M pressure wash here. It's a 4,000 PSI belt drive with a Kohler engine on it. Um, customer brought it in, said that it was leaking water from the unloader. Here's your unloader. Um, other than that, they said everything was good to go. Hooked the machine up, put my pressure hose on, put my water hose on, turn the water on, bleed the air out, turn the unit on, and I always do that with the trigger pulled. The machine begins to run, and I could feel you know good strong pressure at the gun. Uh, and I didn't notice water was coming out through here. Release the trigger on the gun so that it could build pressure to see what result I get. And when I release the pressure, or excuse me, release the trigger on the gun, it begins to build pressure extremely fast. Uh, and I could tell within three seconds the motor's already starting to bog. Uh, means it's exceeding the pressure that the engine itself can uh, withstand as well as uh, what the pump should be putting out uh, Before I could reach down and turn the engine off which I didn't want to do in the first place because uh, my hose and everything is right there The pump is there. There's the off switch uh, So I pulled tried to pull the trigger on my gun to release the pressure and there was no way to release it. The pressure was just so high, I could not pull the trigger. And in about the fourth second, this is my, this is the result of the high pressure that was being built. That's the hose. Now this hose, I've had it for, I don't know, I, I, I replace it every year, but you can see it's not a lot of wear on the hose, dirt, but there's no real wear. You still see the texture on the hose, because this is just a test hose, but it blew, the hose out I mean within four seconds or less it blew and there's your steel uh, reinforcement wires that are inside of the hose that's the inside of the hose now these hoses I uh, can't remember if it's 3300 I think it's no 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 excuse me this is a 5000 psi hose so hoses are rated but then they're also tested uh, so this is rated for 5,000 psi, but it can ex it can be tested up to three times that amount, which would be 15,000 psi. So that it blew this hose out uh, with with very little effort in just a few seconds. Now my gauge, this is the pressure gauge. It's supposed to be glycerin filled. It's no longer glycerin filled. It blew the the cap out, and it also um, pegged, <coughs> excuse me, pegged my needle, it's stuck at 3,000 now. So it actually, what occurred, it went to 5,000 and it kept on the inside spinning, it kept spinning and damaged the spring. So now the spring is extended so it will not go back to zero. So it extended my spring by at least 3,000 PSI beyond the 5,000. So that kind of gives you an idea of uh, what was going on there as far as pressure is a concern. Uh, luckily this was this was down on the floor by my feet instead of uh, at the at the end of the gun which a lot of times can happen here because of the flex that this end of the hose receives over time becomes weaker. But point being uh, there's several things here that I point out in my videos all the time. One is always safety gear Make sure you have safety glasses, things of that nature when you're working on equipment, as well as any potential shock hazards, things. And this is why, because of the unexpected. You just never know when something like this can happen. And you want to try to keep yourself protected. And I usually keep my hose uh, coiled up, and it's away. It's not right at me uh, to prevent any bodily injury. But, of course, you got the gun and everything in your hand, so you can't do but so much there but be aware of what's going on. This also goes back to other videos I've made where I tell you it's always best when you're working with the pressure adjustments, calibrations, or replacement of certain parts to have this guy right here, pressure gauge. So when you're setting these things, you're not doing it on a guess, a wish, and a prayer. You're doing it based on what numbers you're actually seeing on the gauge. So found out that the customer said it was leaking 
they had made tried to make an adjustment to it and they didn't tell me this till after the fact but uh, apparently this thing is screwed down so tight that you can't even turn it which is why when it screws down it increases your pressure uh, it increases the resistance on the unloader so your pressure will rise again so this is why one taking it to a certified shop is always priority but in a jam a situation where you can't do that it's always best to uh, uh, have pressure gauge or as I tell you in my videos when you go to adjust these you adjust these in small increments from low to high not all the way up and then work your way down so this could have been could have been worse uh, this is best case scenario of an accident like this I also want to touch on the steel belts that you see here this over time no matter how how well the outside of the hose looks the inside can always be damaged so that liner on the inside can get damaged and these steel belts can rust when they begin to rust the inside diameter of your hose is restricted and that can impede the use of your chemical injector as well so you don't get chemicals uh, through your through your system like you should so again safety is always paramount wear the appropriate safety gear when you're making adjustments or recalibrations on anything in regards to electrical or pressure make sure you have the proper equipment uh, always seek the help of a certified mechanic when the time comes that you need it the end results speak for themselves I'm just glad that all ten of my fingers are still attached to the hand uh, but if you got any questions any comments feel free to drop them and in, uh, in the uh, comment section below also to try to find me on Facebook uh, if you find me on Facebook it's uh, Brian Schumack the repair guy I can actually answer your questions a lot better in more detail than I can on YouTube simply because YouTube limits what we can do in the comments section back and forth and it can be a uh, heavy delay I appreciate you guys uh, we'll talk to you later Thank you.